we are in section six, the practice capability development for the service level management practice. There will be two Bloom's level two questions, understanding level questions that is from this topic in the exam. We're going to first look at the ITIL capability model structure and uh, understand the capability criteria from this practice, which support the capability levels. ITIL has its own maturity model to define and conclude on the capability of a certain practice. And this capability can be assessed for any of the 34 practices through this model. This model has five levels of maturity and we'll take a look at what those really mean. But before we do that, we need to acknowledge that the practice success factors of the practice, of any practice, take time to develop. They cannot be developed overnight. And so what are these different levels? Level one is the bottommost level and it moves upwards to higher levels of maturity of a practice to level two, level three, four, and the highest level being five. At level one, the minimum level, the practice is not mature at all. It's not well organized. It is performed in a habitual manner, initial or intuitive manner that is. It may occasionally or partially achieve its purpose of the practice because the activities are incomplete, meaning the processes are not in place, the responsibilities are not in place, so the activities are not being done properly for the practice. Therefore, it is essential that an organization moves at least to level two. The practice systematically achieves its purpose at level two through a basic set of activities supported by specialized resources. There are some resources in place now, the activities are being done, the processes are defined, the roles and responsibilities are in place to a good extent, and then it is at level two. Level three, the practice is well-defined. So it is not just systematic, but it is well-defined now. Achieves its purpose in an organized way using dedicated resources and relies on inputs from other practices that are integrated into a service management system. So at level three, there is integration. Integration is the key word for level three. There is integration of information from various sources, integration of information systems, integration of suppliers into the work of the practice, and integration of different practices or multiple practices into value streams. At level two, the value stream concept doesn't really happen yet. It is at level three where the value streams begin to work properly. But at level two, the practice is already doing its job okay, quite okay. Level four, highly organized a manner of working of the practice to achieve its purpose. And there is measurement, assessment, so which means the metrics are defined for the practice for the PSFs and maybe other metrics, performance metrics of the practice relevant to the practice. And these are measured regularly and assessed and reported. Level five, it's beyond that. There is continuous review and uh, identifying of improvement opportunities and thereby improving the practice, implementing those improvement opportunities. Every practice has its own practice success factors. And in ITIL, we have the 34 management capabilities or practices. Service level management is one of them. We have the others such as change enablement, risk management, service request management, and so on. Every practice has its own practice success factors. Usually they range between two to four. This practice has two practice success factors that we noted earlier. And uh, every practice success factor has certain capability criteria. And it is through these capability criteria that the levels come into play, which means that if we took practice success factor one, there could be seven or eight or even more capability criteria. And each one of them is assigned to a specific level of maturity of ITIL. So let's take a look at uh, what those capability criteria are. And again, these criteria are coming from the different dimensions of service management. So for example, it could relate to roles and responsibilities or tools and technology or partners and suppliers involvement or uh, the processes and those things being in place. So that same slide that I, the picture that I explained, uh, I showed you earlier is explained on this slide. And there are a few other things here. The last point here is particularly new. The higher the capability level, the more comprehensive realization of the practice is expected naturally. And uh, one more thing here is automation typically occurs at level three or even higher because automation is possible only if the practice is well-defined and organized. However, the service level management practice, there is automation at level two itself. But in general, 
it is level three wherein the automation comes into picture. So for many of the practices, uh, you might notice that the automation is actually happening at level three and not at level two, like this practice does. So now we have uh, some guidelines about the capability development. Uh, so here we have that the, the management practices, each one of them should support the achievement of the organization's goals and objectives and enable creation of value for the stakeholders. The second point here is really important uh, also for the exam. Every organization will have its own target capability level for each practice. It is not necessary that they would like to have all their 34 practices at level five, um, because that can cost a lot of money, effort to train the people, set up all the processes and their activities within processes, information systems, uh, specialist resources like the service level manager, the service owners for all services. Therefore, they may decide to have every practice at a certain target level only. And that would depend mainly on the service provider strategy, their positioning in the business and the market, their business model, operating models. If it's an e-commerce uh, company, then they may have their own targets for the capability levels of certain practices. If it's a retail store, a physical store, they may have a different way they use IT systems for invoicing and customer billing, all that. They may have other uh, target levels. And uh, the next point is something uh, in line with I, what I mentioned earlier, a higher capability level provides higher assurance of the fulfillment of the purpose of the practice, but it comes with a cost. There is cost of uh, attaining that higher level, the cost of management, therefore, the cost of automation, cost of training, and so on. Therefore, Rather than deciding to be at level five for all the 34 practices, organizations need to define a specific target capability level for each of their management practices. For example, they might think about being at at least at level two for this practice to start with. They may move on to level three afterwards, depending on their business growth and customer needs, et cetera. While they may want to keep the service desk practice maybe at level three or level four to start with, incident management also to be at level three or level four because they are strongly related to customer satisfaction, user satisfaction, and so on. Again, it is up to the organization based on their uh, strategy, positioning, and business and operating models.